Hey, I'm Andres. Today I'm going to walk you through the build of our FT-X29 kit. Now first off, this is not a beginner build or a beginner plane. You need to have at least intermediate to advanced building skills. And speaking of which, our Power Pack C will not come with all the materials you need. All you need that's not included in the Power Pack C kit is some wire extensions for your battery lead and your motor leads. Now your motor leads, you can actually buy those extensions on our store. We sell 12 inch 3.5 millimeter bullet extensions for the motor, but for the battery lead, you will have to solder those yourself. So if you're building this plane, make sure you have uh, at least some basic soldering skills or you have access to someone who does and can solder those for you. For this build, we've broken down the entire process into different steps. So if you need to skip forward or go back and rewatch a step, you can get a link to every step in the description below. So once you get your materials all set and ready, let's get building. So first we're gonna assemble the center fuselage section, which uh, you'll need these pieces for. So take these pieces out of your speedball kit and we'll get started. So first we wanna remove all these uh, foam cavities. It actually helps if you dull the point of your razor blade a little bit, so you're not actually cutting through the other side of the foam. All you wanna do is score the foam to the other side so you can peel it off. So you can peel it off easily without leaving any foam residue behind. So these two tabs right here are actually score cuts. They don't go out all the way to the other side of the foam. So we wanna do the same thing with the razor blade. Score on both sides of the cut. And take a barbecue skewer, take the pointy side, just dig that foam out. Try to get as much of the foam out as you can and leave none of these little bits behind. On these two pieces though, the tabs actually do go all the way through the foam. So you wanna just pop that out with either a razor blade or you can even just pop it out with your fingers. Works either way. All right, once you have all your pieces looking like this with all the cavities removed, and these uh, tabs popped out, we're ready to assemble the center fuselage section. All right, let's start out with this bigger fork piece. This is actually gonna be the top of our fuselage. And uh, we also need these smaller side cheeks, which actually go inside. Um, so let's start out by matching these two up with the etch side facing up. Just go ahead and tape them with a couple small pieces of tape right in the middle. Try to avoid the hole though because we'll need to stick wires to them later. You can flip it over to the other side, open up this cavity, flip it up 180 degrees and put tape on the other side too to seal that off really well. Okay, next we want to take a straight edge or any other flat straight uh, material you have, lay it up against this etch mark right here, and just bend this foam up a good 30 or so degrees. And that's just to tell the foam where to bend because we don't want it creasing wherever it wants, we want to tell it where to bend. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So now we'll be joining these two pieces together. But first, we need to establish this angle that these, uh, these two pieces are gonna be sitting at. So what we'll do is we'll take some hot glue and a squeegee, just squeeze it into this crack right here. Just Squeeze that glue. Now I just want to insert these two tabs into the two matching tabs on the fuselage piece. And um, make sure these two pieces on the side, these side cheeks, nest into the little foam cavity on the, uh, on the bottom piece. That way they'll be nice and situated to dry at the angle that you want them to. Leave that there for a good uh, 30 seconds. All right, next, I want to apply glue on the top surface of this side cheek and go out to about a quarter to a half an inch from the from the edge because this will actually overlap over this crease line here which uh, you don't want. Also let's put glue the inside these cavities. Now we can just flip this over put into the tabs again like we did before. Make sure the sides nest into those cavities again provide a nice secure glue joint. Once these side plates are dry, we'll be moving on to the outside side plates. So same thing, we'll take a ruler, straight edge, to this etch mark right here, and bend the foam up again, good 30 to 45 degrees, just to establish that crease. And this score line back here, we will actually take a razor blade and just score that to the other side of the paper. We don't want to crack that, but we want it to bend at a nice sharp line instead of a creased one. So the next step 
Very similar thing. We're gonna squeeze some glue right into this crack right here. And take a squeegee, and just squeeze that glue into that crack. And before it dries, we want to line up with the outside with the tip of this side plate matching up with the front edge of this foam and bend that to our desired angle. Hold it there for a good 20 seconds to dry. Once that's dry, you can put some glue in this cavity right here, but only go up to this etch line because that's where we'll want this foam to bend later. Just go ahead and squeeze that in and hold it there until it dries. Now make sure as you're doing this that again, the front edge of this side cheek is matching up with the front edge of this bottom plate. Now same thing as the other side, bend it up. There we go. Open up the score cut just a tiny bit more and we're ready to glue this side plate on. So now just get a squeegee ready. We're just going to squeeze some glue into this crease. Take as much of it as you can out and go ahead and hold it up against this side to establish this angle. Now we want to apply glue to this bottom piece, but only up to this etch line right here. So stop right there, about a quarter inch short of it, and line this tip up with the front edge of this bottom piece, and press it up against the side. All right, for our next step, we're gonna bring this piece back into the picture. Uh, so you should have already taken the foam out of the sides, and what we're gonna do next is just take a razor blade again, just run it through these score cuts. Make sure to not uh, cut the paper on the other side. And we can just bend this over and slide this piece into the, uh, the bottom of the fuselage, like so. So the leading edge of this piece should match up with the, the bottom tips of the side cheeks and the back of this piece should line up with the tip right here. Flip one of these flaps up and apply glue about half and half between the foam and the paper on both sides. Flip that over, making sure it seats well into this cavity right here and flip the whole piece over and hold it against the table, using the table as our friend, and repeat the same process with the flap on the other side. Bring this over, the whole piece over, just hold that securely against the bottom of the table. Now we can flip this back end up and apply glue to the sides. This flat portion, the side cheeks inside, as well as a little bit of glue just to these parts. So both the front and the back flaps are sealed up. We can just flip this over, making sure that it seats fully inside the cavity. And again, flip this over and just push that against the surface of the table, just to make sure everything's nice and flat. Next, we just want to seal up, seal up the back end of this fuselage piece. So what you want to do is just put some glue in the middle of all these cavities right here. Don't worry if this spills over a little bit, this will all be on the inside, so it looks don't really matter. And on the sides of this bottom piece. So putting that flat against the table, push this down, and then rotate the side plates in to squeeze the, squeeze the glue inside. Now watch out, if you have any glue seeping out the, uh, the sides of the piece, try to move the piece around on the table a little bit so it doesn't stick to the table. Once you finish this step, you have your uh, beginner set of FPV goggles. Okay. Works pretty well, actually. Resolution is on point. All right, so once we're done with the center fuselage section, 
can move on to the rear fuselage section. For the rear section of the fuselage, you'll need these parts. I've removed the foam cavities from these two pieces, and I've removed the tabs from these two. But I'm leaving the tabs in this piece because since there's so little room between this crease and this tab, keeping that tab in actually helps it not crush in on itself when you're folding it. So for this piece, you want to take a barbecue skewer, take the pointy end, just run it through the, the creases gently. Now you want to be gentle, but you also want to apply enough force to actually crease the foam. Next, just fold these up and fold them, you know, past 45 degrees, more than you have to, just so that when you're actually gluing it, it'll want to stay in that position instead of falling back apart. That's looking pretty good. So this piece is actually the same on both sides, except for these tabs. So when you're building this, make sure that the tabs are pointing backwards and not forwards. Using this step here, we can keep this together. So we just want to crush in the tabs a little bit so they go into the corresponding tabs easier. So we can just slot these right in here. And then when we're actually gluing it, this back piece We'll also act as a jig for the back end of it so we can get the correct uh, shape that we need, just like so. So once you've practiced that and you're comfortable with that step, let's put some glue on it and get it to stay. Just apply some glue in those creases. We'll do all four at the same time. Just scrape that glue off and push it into those creases. I can curve that piece over, put the tabs into the corresponding tabs on the bottom piece, and flip it over and put this jig in on the back. Now this jig also acts to hold the thrust tube if you're building it as an EDF version, and there's actually two of these pieces which are the same except for the size of the hole. So one of them is made for a 64 millimeter EDF thrust tube, one of them is for a 7. Uh, if you're building an EDF and you're using either a 70 or a 64, it's a good idea to use the other one for this part in case you damage it or you scuff it up or even glue it onto the piece. But if you're not doing an EDF version, it doesn't matter which one you use because you won't be using them in the actual build anyways. Alright, so once this piece is glued and secure, now we can pop these tabs out because it's not going to crush in on itself anymore. Now these two outer tabs might be glued to the foam because when you when you squeeze the foam out, it tends to smear a little bit all over the place. So these might take a little bit more effort to pop out, but that's okay. And this piece is now holding a shape. Let's move on to the next piece now. For this piece, there's actually quite a few score cuts. Uh, for these back ones, these angled ones, we're actually gonna take a barbecue skewer, run them through to establish a crease. But for these smaller ones up here, we actually want to take a razor blade and score cut them. Don't go out all the way to the other side, so just leave the paper intact. But uh, when, you're, when you're done with that, crack this open. And we'll actually want to put a bevel on this little piece up here. With this bevel, it'll be a tapered bevel, so it won't be 45 degrees you know, straight all the way. It's actually going to be tapered off. So that the bevel gets smaller as it goes in this direction. Now to do this step, I actually like using just a handheld razor blade and getting both cuts at the same time. If you aren't comfortable using a razor blade, you can actually use some sandpaper and sand that down. Next we'll be folding this piece into the desired shape that we want for the fuselage. So let's crease all the pieces just over 45 degrees, which is more than we have to, to establish a better crease. Do it on both sides. So that when you fold it over, the front part is shaped like a rectangle with 90 degrees on uh, both sides. And the back portion is shaped just like 
the other section that we made because those two will be matching up. All right, so have a squeegee ready for this step. Put some glue all the way through in each of these creases. And squeeze the glue down into those creases as well as you can, just like the other steps. I want to fold this up, keeping this portion of it flat against the table. Slide this jig in in the back and hold that with one hand. Get that seated properly, the best fit later on. And this jig in the front so we can get a perfect square 90 degrees. And hold that for a good minute for it to dry. Once you have these two sections both completed, we're ready to uh, join them like so. So what we want to do is just apply some glue, healthy bead of glue, to one side. Match up the other side, but make sure these tabs are facing away from the joint. It's just like so. Make sure that's matched up well on all sides. If you have some glue coming out from the edges, just take a scrap piece of foam and smear it off. When you're doing this step, it's actually a good idea too to support the foam from the inside with your hand so it doesn't sink in and you can keep it perfectly centered with the, the other piece of the foam. Now we're actually ready to join these two pieces and make the fuselage. So we can actually flip these two pieces upside down, just like so. And when we put glue in, we'll put glue on one side and join the two together, keeping both flat on the table and square on the sides. Again, there's a healthy bead of glue and keep a squeegee on hand in case you need to scrape some glue off from the outsides. We just slide these two together, push them both flat onto the table, and keep these two sides secure with your hands. You can scrape off any excess glue if there's any on the outside. Now while we're doing this step, keep in mind that you have glue on the bottom surface of this joint too, so you want to just keep moving it on that surface of the table so you don't get stuck. Alright, for the next step we'll need these two pieces and we'll also need to remove the foam cavities from here. Now for these tabs right here, they actually have another tab next to them that are connected and it's also a score cut so it doesn't show up on the other side. So we'll also need to score that, also these two pieces right here, crack that foam open like so, remove this. leaving this whole cavity as one cavity and the, uh, the paper on the other side is still intact. So once you've removed all the cavities, your pieces should look like this. We're gonna leave these two tabs in for now for the same reasons. We don't want this piece crushing in on itself while we're building. So this piece is actually marked as a B-fold, which means that we're gonna rotate the side plate beside the bottom plate, like so. When we apply glue, we want to favor glue on the side of the bottom plate so that when this rotates up, the foam is actually contacting between this side cheek and the side of this bottom plate. You just take a squeegee and scrape off some excess glue. Now while this glue is drying, you can actually take our 90 degree angle that we include in the kit and just hold it up against the side while pressing this side plate down. Now keep it nice and square. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Favoring glue on the side of the bottom plate. Rotating up beside the bottom plate. And hold it there with a 90 degree while it dries. Notice also I'm using these fingers to keep the uh, bottom plate flat on the table so that doesn't move around either. So for this part we're going to be joining these two pieces together. Um, what we want to do is just crush in these tabs with your fingers so that it slides into the foam better. This will actually fit right into these tabs right here. You want to make sure that the, uh, the piece is pointing this way, not the opposite way. So the tab should be further forward than backwards, leaving only about half an inch on the back end. So when you're comfortable with that fit, can put some glue 
on this edge right here. And on the inside of this tab. You can just push this in like so. And while you're doing that, fold these two side sheets up as a B fold on both sides to keep that glue from spreading out. Just hold that in place. And we can bring the 90 degree back if we want. All right, once that's dry, you can go ahead and put a nice coat of glue on both side cheeks. And like before, it's a B fold up. So keep that side plate beside the bottom plate. Fold this up as well. And just hold them both at the top to make sure that they're as close to the, uh, the side cheeks of the inside piece as possible. We want that glue to squeeze out and smear around instead of just staying in one place. All right, our next step is to fold this top piece over and seal up this edge. So what you want to do is just give it a nice healthy bead of glue on the inside of this edge, inside of this edge, and on the whole piece right here. Now we just fold that over, make sure everything is lined up well on the other side. And once again, use the table as our friend, pushing that down against the table and keeping everything nice and nice and flat. Give that about 30 seconds to dry. All right, so our next step is to slide this piece into the front of this fuselage section. Now when you do this, make sure that the cavity is pointing upwards and that these uh, these angles are also angled like this. You don't want to uh, be gluing this on the wrong side. So when you do this, this is actually going to be a pretty tight fit just to keep everything nice and secure once you put this plane together. So when you put this in, just make sure that you're not crushing any foam or paper on either sides. We just slide that in, slide that backwards into the fuselage. These two tabs right here will actually go under this top surface of the foam. Just keep in mind that this seam should be flushed back here as well as underneath. So when you're happy with the fit, we can take this piece out. We're gonna apply glue to the bottom surface here on this surface right here, the top as well, and on the bottom half of these. Now we're putting these on the bottom half because when you slide it in, it's gonna automatically push some glue up to the top. Give it some nice even pressure to see that all the way in. When you've pushed this in all the way, the whole top surface should be flush and the bottom should be angled out just a bit. Also, now that we've done that, you can go ahead and pop out your tabs. So now our fuselage section is done, we can put this aside and come back to it later. In this step, we're going to assemble the nose and attach it onto the fuselage. So to build the nose, we need these pieces right here. And as always, we need to remove the foam from these pieces. And these extra tabs on this piece are actually cut all the way through. So you don't have to worry about scoring those again. Fold it on the edge closest to the tab. So when we peel it off, it's nice and clean. We'll see the same process on the other side. There we go. So for this piece, we're going to take a barbecue skewer, take the pointy side, and just run it along these V-shaped etch cuts right there. For the small tabs in the front, just score that with the blade. Now we can go ahead and crack these open and do the same thing that we did on the fuselage. Just take a razor blade, 
and make a tapered bevel right there. So start out wide and then end it right about where this part starts. Same thing on the other side. And there we go. Set that aside for now, move on to this piece. Do the same thing. Run your uh, barbecue skewer through these score cuts. And don't forget the front too. And there we go. So from here, we're gonna bring back these two pieces and start assembling the nose from the back towards the front. Uh, first thing we wanna do is just take the front piece of paper off so we can curl this front part nice and even. So when you're curling, you can just lay a few uh, fingers on the bottom here for support and then just roll it across the table we do the thumbs on the top, applying even pressure. So you crease the foam a bit on the inside, but not on the outside. Just a slight roll should be enough. Next, let's do a B fold on this piece right here. So again, B means that we're gonna fold the side plate beside the bottom plate. So let's apply glue there. And just a tiny bead right here. And we just want a tiny bead because when you fold it up, we don't want too much glue seeping into this tab right here. You can take a 90 degree angle, just hold that upright. And do the same thing on the other side. There's some excess glue, so I'm just gonna take it off with scrap of foam. All right, now we're gonna attach this piece onto the bottom plate of the nose. Now when you're doing this, make sure that the angled side of this piece is facing towards the back of the nose. Not this way, but towards the back. So let's uh, take note of where the uh, front of this leaves off. And we'll just apply glue right on the outside of here, right about up to that point both sides. Now we can just slide this on. Slide it back so that the tip of this portion is flush with the trailing edge of the, of the bottom nose piece. Just hold that nice and tight up against the table. Move it around a little bit to avoid sticking to the table. And you can always use your right angle to keep it nice and square. All right, now we'll be taking this piece and carefully crease it along your pre-established creases a bit over what you need. So this piece should be over 90 degrees a little bit, just so when it relaxes, it relaxes into that position. The same thing with the other side. Fold it over just a touch over what you need. So when you fold it over, it should be square on this side. And look like this on this side. All right, so let's test fit it real quick up against this piece as well as the bottom and that's looking pretty good so let's put some glue in there now we're just gonna glue the creases for now to establish this shape and then we'll glue onto the nose so just put some glue there have a scrap piece of foam handy squeeze that glue in. now we can fold it up and sit it right on the bottom of that nose piece butting it up against this piece that we installed before, just making sure that everything is nice and square. Hold it for about 30 seconds for the glue to dry. Now that your glue's dry, you can go ahead and apply glue on this portion right here, all the way up to the paper. And we can apply glue to the back of this piece. So now you can Install it a little bit forward of what you need, and then just slide it back into place. Now notice I'm holding it on the sides and on the top, so I can push it down against the table and pull it back against this piece back here. So the next step can seem pretty intimidating, but don't be. Just take it slow, take it step by step, and you'll be fine. 
Uh, first of all, let's open up these score cuts a little bit, just so that we can bend these over without leaving an ugly crease on the other side. Well, same thing with this piece. We want to fold it like this, touch over what you actually need. So do that on all of the pieces. So what you want to do is place your hand here on the bottom plate, and then just rotate the side up. So you're supporting the bottom and the side. All right. This nose piece, it's okay if it wrinkles a little bit on the inside, you won't see it. All right, so let's go ahead and test fit this back portion real quick. So notice I'm just cupping this with my hand then gently resting the uh, the rest of the sections on my on my palm like this. So we slide it on. Want to cup the outsides of the bottom plate and match up with this shape right here. And that's looking pretty good. So let's put some glue in there. And as always, have a squeegee ready. Doesn't have to be a lot of glue, just enough to smear inside. Just the same motion as before. Make sure you're cupping both sides of the bottom plate and just match this up as well as you can with the profile right here. Hold that for about half a minute for it to dry. Now let's do the same thing, just with the center section. So again, glue and all these creases. Just go ahead and smear that off. And this time, instead of putting it on the nose, we'll just wrap this around and match it up with the back section of this portion, like so. Also helps to have a hand on the inside, so you can push it against the outside if you need to. Give that another good half minute to dry. Now we can actually glue these two sections together. So let's apply some glue on one of the surfaces here. It's a nice healthy bead of glue all around the edges. and. Close them together like so. All right, now let's focus our attention on the front portion. This part's basically the same, but it's a little bit more tricky because it's a lot smaller to handle. Uh, the first thing you want to do is just take a razor blade or a sanding block, whichever one you prefer, and just get a slight bevel, not even 45 degrees, maybe just just a, just a real slight bevel on the whole surface in the front. just so that when you fold it over, everything's nice and flush. Same thing, have a scrap of foam handy. Squeeze some glue into here. And scrape that all off. So now you can cup this with one hand, and grab the nose by the other hand, and just work it so that it creases right where the other section does, just like so. You want the angles to match up as closely as possible to get the cleanest look. All right, so we can open this piece back up, put some glue on the edge right here. The same thing as before, rotate it over, and watch out for the glue coming out of the sides because it's hot. Now, if you do have any glue coming out of the sides, go ahead and use a squeegee, scrape it off just like before. And I'm just supporting it on the inside now as well, so that if it tries to cave in on itself, I have a supporter from the inside. Now what we can do to reinforce the nose is just apply a bead of glue right in the seam, these cuts. You take a scrap piece of foam, a little bit longer than usual, just scrape that, scrape that in there. 
This is just to put a layer of glue over the paper so it bonds better and uh, gives you better adhesion. Now we're ready to attach the front section of the nose onto the rest of the nose we have. Um, so let's just try a test fit right here. Copying the sides all the way to the front and matching this profile in the back. Now don't worry about this excess paper that's coming off the edge. Uh, that's supposed to be like that so that you can trim that away when it's finished. This part is a little bit tricky because we need to get this piece adhered to the bottom of this throughout the whole curve. So what we want to do is when we apply glue, put this on, make sure the back is centered, and then rock this forward onto the table. And we also want to support it back here with the hand so that we can get the leverage and so that this part doesn't separate. So let's try that. Let's put some glue on here. Some glue also on the side of here and on this side. Now we want to go kind of from the front and slide it back into place. Now let's make sure that this is all squared up and even. Get a hand up at the back of the nose for support and just rock it forward onto the nose. Rock it back and forth a little bit so we can get adhesion throughout the piece. Do this for a good minute because this is an important piece. It'll be right at the front of your build and you don't want it to be ugly. Now that we have our nose all glued together, we're ready to remove the excess paper on the outside. I actually prefer to use a, a pair of scissors for this part instead of a razor blade. You can use a razor blade, but I just prefer to use the scissors because you can just ride one blade up against the foam and cut it with the other. That way it's nice and clean, and it's easy to do, too, with a pair of scissors. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So these are the only parts we need to assemble the canopy. And all we need to do is just remove one tab from this piece right here. This is actually a former for the canopy, which we're going to do a C-fold on, insert into this slot, the nose right here, just to keep the canopy profile the way we want it. So let's go ahead and put a nice bead of glue on the inside here, and simply fold it over like so. And it helps to line this up well and just press it against the table for a nice firm result. So now we're just going to put some glue on the two tabs right here and press it into this slot. Now we can set this aside, let the glue dry, work on the rest of the canopy parts. So let's start with this big back one right here and peel the paper off one side. Now what we're going to do is take this to the edge of the table, put your palm over it and just roll it like this. We use our palm and our fingers because it gives it a lot more surface on the outside, which provides for a better curve on the inside. Just do that a few times to get a nice round curve like this. So for this part, again, we're gonna crush this tab a little bit on each side with our fingers just to get it seating well in these tabs. We do one side at a time. So you get it in on one side and then the other. That should seat pretty well in there. You press all the way to the bottom. Now you should also notice if you look from the back, you should be able to see that the canopy is resting pretty well on that form. So we can pull this off and just apply glue these four tabs right here on both sides and all across on the top of this former, like so. 
do the same process. While you're doing this, just make sure that the angled portion of the canopy is facing backwards. All right, so we're gonna keep on building from the back end of the canopy towards the front. So let's take this middle section, peel off one side of the paper, and do the same thing. We're gonna roll this with our palm on the edge of the table, just a few times on each side. So you can see the foam on the inside is nice and creased. And even if you do get you know, some, some creases in there, it's fine because you won't see it. The outside with the paper still looks nice. So let's test fit this onto the canopy. Just make sure that we have a good fit all around. Now if you have the speed build kit, you might notice that there's almost a little cave cut out by the laser in the foam, and there's just a tiny bit of paper overlapping. So what I like to do is actually put that paper over the other surface of the foam and almost cup it inside. Makes for a nice smooth finish. And if you're scratch building and you don't have that laser cut little cave, just butt it up against the other piece and it'll look fine. So let's glue, go ahead and glue this in. We need glue on these two bottom parts right here and on the back end. So if you just have some glue creeping out on the outside of the, your uh, canopy, just take a scrap piece of foam and squeeze it off. Hold that for about a minute for it to dry. So we're going to repeat the same process with the front of the canopy. Peeling the paper off of one side, and putting it to the edge of the table. Put your palm over it and just curve it over this piece. Now on this piece, you notice I'm actually rotating it a little bit as I'm rolling because I want it to get the contour like a cone instead of just like a cylinder. So start from the middle straight, but then when you get to the edge, rotate a little bit so you're getting that whole contour. It should look something like this once you're done. Right now, we can either take a razor blade or a sanding block and just bevel off the foam on the bottom. We do this so it can sit flat on the foam instead of having a foam bump on the bottom, which raises it up. So let's go ahead and test fit this again. Once again, cupping the other piece of the canopy with the uh, little paper overhang. We want to squeeze in these edges so that the foam is sitting nice and flat on the other surface. Otherwise, it'll bulge out like this and it won't sit flat. So let's go ahead and put some glue on the back side of this, as well as the whole underside. Go ahead and fit that on. And take a scrap piece of foam, smear off that excess glue. in place. Now if you notice on the rear end of the canopy there's also a little bit of foam that sticks out. So we want to do the same thing as we on the front. Just take a razor blade or some sandpaper and just remove that extra foam so it's nice and flush. Next we want to take these these side cheeks at the back. Just crush them in with your fingers because this is what's going to be sliding onto the plane, we don't want this catching on any other pieces of foam or paper and peeling that up. You can take a piece of tape and put this over that seam. Okay. 
and fold it over so that it's nice and smooth when we install it onto the plane. You can do the same thing on the other side. Okay. All right, so now our nose is done and we can actually test fit it onto the rest of the fuselage. So this should be a fairly tight fit, which is what we want. Just slowly ease that in. Until you hit the back of this foam piece right here. Now this nose, it's a pretty tight fit right now, but it'll get loosened up after you remove a few times and put it back on. And now that we've finished the nose and attached it onto the fuselage, we're ready to move on to our next step. In this step, we'll be assembling the wing and installing the servos. So first we're going to assemble the center portion of the wing. So let's take this center section, which is actually the bottom of the center, and crack it open. Now if you're scratch building this, you probably won't have this crack, but in the speedboat kit, we needed to put this in in order to fit this onto the foam. And just squeeze the rest of the glue off with the scrap piece of foam. We'll leave that there to dry for a solid minute, just keeping it flat on the table. While the bottom piece is drying, we can take these two top pieces and put a bevel in the leading edge. So let's actually take this to the edge of the table and take our razor blade, put it at about 45 degrees and drag it across the foam. Now you want to cut this bevel with the blade at an angle like this and not straight up and down like this. this the shallower of an angle you can go at, the easier and smoother your bevel cut will be. Do the same thing on the other side. Also be careful not to cut yourself or your hand, you know, if you're holding it like I am now. So one thing to note while you're building this, if you're going to build it as an EDF, and especially if it's a 70 millimeter EDF, you may have to cut a relief out in your wing to allow it to fit. So if you if you are using a 70 millimeter EDF, go ahead and trace out this uh, this edge mark and cut that out. You may have to make it a little bit bigger later, but that's okay. A good starting point is right here. Now that this is dry, we can. Also put bevels on this. Same thing, 45 degrees and a shallow angle on the blade. Make sure you do this on the leading edge, which has a shallower angle than the trailing edge. Now we can flip this bottom piece over and line up these two top pieces face down on the leading edge so that the two bevels are lined up right next to each other. Now we're just going to take a piece of packing tape, a little over what we need, then put this right up against the other piece. We can lay that tape down, smooth it out, and take a razor blade and just trim that excess off. And same thing on the other side. I usually put the tape on one side first and then mash it up with the other side with the, uh, the tape flap kind of peeled up a little bit. So that way you can get the bottom of this tape to tack onto the other part before you make the final decision to lay the tape down. Otherwise, if you try to line these uh, two pieces up and put the piece of tape right over it, you might get the, uh, the piece just a little bit off to the side and that's not how you want it. Just line this up. And like before, trim off the excess tape with the razor blade. Now I can flip this over and in this part I'm going to install the spar. Now the spar is in three pieces because the outside of this wing is going to be very slim while the inside is going to be fairly thick, three pieces of foam thick to be exact. Uh, so let's pop out these tabs 
make our spar. So you'll see this bottom piece right here, the little circle in the middle should be pointed more forwards. And you'll see that there are a few uh, etch marks where this goes on the bottom plate. So you'll know exactly where to put that and line it up. All right, so let's get a nice bead of glue on the bottom surface of this piece. And when we put that down, make sure you line it up with the etch marks and kind of smear it around a little bit just to get the glue to flatten out. Before we move on to putting these other spars on, we want to take our servos, center them, and install them. And Josh will actually show you how to do that. Our first step before we center the servos is we're going to want to make sure we select the proper servo worm. That's going to be this guy right here. You're going to notice about four or five different servo worms. The one we want to use is a single side, and we're ultimately going to be using the center circle here for our push rod. From this point, we're going to go forward, show you how to center it. You're going to notice in this portion of the servo video, it's not going to be the same servo worm. Make sure you select this now. I'm going to plug this into our servo centering tool. If you don't have one of these tools, it is so convenient and so useful in so many ways. I strongly recommend you getting it. This is only about seven bucks from our store. We'll have a link down below for you to use. On the side of a servo centering tool, you're going to notice three indicators. You got your servo, which is your signal wire, your positive, and your negative. We're going to line up the ground wire with a negative, the power is in the middle, and the signal wire, which is usually white or yellow, will be on the top. For powering this, a simple quick tip that you can do if you don't have a single cell battery is using the balance lead of a two or three cell battery. Now you're going to notice on the battery you always have a power indicated wire. So here's your positive red, all the rest are considered negatives, and we're going to only take the red one up to line up with the power and the ground on the servo centering tool. You don't want to put a two cell on this because it's going to destroy your tool and your servos and void your warranty. So now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to plug my power line into the middle my ground going down towards the bottom, and now I have one cell worth of power. Now you're gonna notice that these multiple ports are here. It doesn't matter which plug you plug in to power a unit, and you can center three servos at one time. This tool also works to test motors and ESCs. Now that we have this, you can see that I can move my servo back and forth with no problem. Now I was talking about how well centered this is up. I'm gonna turn this to the extreme, and I'm gonna clip center, and you're gonna see it's spot on from the factory. You never want to take this for granted because if you do and you install this and you need to power it on, you're going to use all your sub trims and all your trim to override it. What centered servo technically is, is basically just telling the servo to be in the center position so it has equal throws both ways. Now with this servo guide, if I flip the center and you see something like this, all you need to do is install your servo horn at 90 degrees. Once we're happy with that center, we're going to drop in the shortest little screw and twist it down in. You notice with my fingers I supported the screw as I turned it in so I didn't strip out the gears. Now we're going to do the exact same on the opposite one. The only difference is we want this servo horn to go the other direction. Kaboom skis. Plug it in. There you go, once again centered beautifully. Drop the shortest screw in our pack in there. And there we have it. The Emacs servo is one of our favorite servos. We've been using them forever. The only time we ever get failures is in a very hard crash or if someone puts too much voltage through it. All right, our servos are now centered. Our control horns are on. We're ready to move to the next step. Now that you have your servo centered, uh, you want to make sure that you have arms installed on opposite sides. So you can see when these servos are facing the same way, these arms come out at different sides. Now the next step we want to do is to take the back of the servo, take a razor blade or even you know, sandpaper, and just score the back of this servo up. That's just to get the plastic a little bit more roughened up so it accepts and adheres to the hot glue a little bit better. So you can just put a a little bit of hot glue on there and put it right into the servo hole. Press that down firm. And then we can feed this servo wire through this slot.
and out into the hole in the center. And repeat the same process on the other side. Now we're ready to install our two other spars. So we can go ahead and pop these holes out. Install the medium size one first. So what you want to do is slide these servo connectors through, lift this back up, and just apply glue on the bottom of this and get where those servos are too. I can flip this back up and center that with the hole and on the sides. And do the same thing for the top. Can move it around a little bit before the glue dries so you can actually smear the glue around and get better adhesion. Now uh, that's done, let's take a barbecue skewer, the pointy side, and just run it through these score cuts right here. Just so that it creases a little bit better when we fold the wings over. Also we can take this opportunity to pop the servo holes out from the top. Now what you want to do is just grab this uh, this plate back here and just use your hand to hold as much of the back surface as possible so you don't stress any particular part of the foam. When you do this, you want to line the outside edge up with uh, the outside on the bottom and you want to line the inside up with the score cut in the middle. And we can go ahead and fold the other side over as well. And just establish those creases so that they hold where you want them to. That's looking pretty good. So we can go ahead and put some glue in these creases. Again with a scrap piece of foam on hand. So we can just go ahead and scrape that off. and fold it over again. You also want to concentrate on putting pressure, even pressure throughout this part right here to hold it against the spar, and this part on the outside to hold it flat against the spar. That way, your wing won't warp and twist on the top surface. Now we're ready to fold this wing over and actually glue it in place. So let's apply glue the front leading edge, the spar on the outside, the spar on the middle, and the spar on the inside, favoring it towards the side you're working on. And we want to get a bead on the trailing edge, like so. Now you can go ahead and fold this over. Again, keep it in mind to apply even pressure throughout. So now I'm applying pressure on the spar to keep it flat, and on the trailing edge, because there's glue there too. And just keeping in mind to uh, square everything up with the middle and the outside surface. We can repeat the same process on the other side. This time we actually want to apply some glue on the inside surface too and the other wing. They'll both glue together. The same thing, even pressure on the spar, even pressure on the trailing edge. So now that we have both top surfaces glued down, we're gonna go back with a bead of glue, just squeeze it right in between. Have a scrap piece of foam handy to smear the excess off. And just turn it over, see if, just in case you have any on the bottom, you don't want that getting on the table.
the elevons on this plane are actually on both the center section and the outside section of the wing. So this root of the elevon right here needs to be cut away, not completely. Just open up that score cut and go back in and just bevel it at about 45 degrees, the razor blade, so this part can uh, move freely. And do the same thing on the other side. Now to reinforce these hinges, you can take your hot glue gun and just put a little bit of glue right in the middle, grab a scrap piece of foam, and smear as much off as you can, leaving just a thin film of glue. Make sure when you're letting these dry to leave them open because you don't want them gluing shut. So let's move on to the outer section of the wing. Uh, these are the only pieces you need and you want to get two barbecue skewers for this step. To start out, you want to crack it in the middle at, at a score cut. And just put a 45 degree bevel on both sides. We call this a double bevel. And while we're at it, we can open up this uh, last score cut here, which is going to be our hinge for the elevon, and cut a 45 degree bevel on the elevon. So now that we have the bevels done, we can take the pointy end of the barbecue skewer and run it through these score cuts right here, just so that we can establish a better crease when we fold the wing over. And let's install our spar as well, which matches up with the, uh, the root of this wing, but does not extend all the way out. So just keep it in between those two score cuts, apply glue on the back surface, and smear it into place. So now let's uh, test the fit of this wing by flipping it over and folding it over, flat onto the spar, and then rotate the back end down to match with the trailing edge. This edge should be flush, and this edge should be flush as well. Before we apply any glue, let's fit this barbecue skewer in as well. This will stiffen up the wing quite a bit and increase the durability, so if you hit something with the outer surface of the wing, um, chances are you'll be fine. So you just fold that in into the pocket created by the double bevel in the leading edge. Mark about where that cuts off and cut that off with a razor blade by rolling it on the table and just cracking it off. Now we're ready to glue this wing. So you want to put a nice healthy bead of glue on the leading edge some glue on the spar and some glue on the trailing edge of the bottom surface. Don't forget to put your barbecue skewer in the leading edge. Just fold that over, keeping in mind to apply pressure evenly on the spar all the way across and keeping these edges flush on either side. And when you're done, just do the same thing on the other side.
Now we can take this opportunity to just apply a light bead of glue across that other one. Hinge. Just scrape as much of it off as you can. Just for some reinforcement. Make sure when you're letting these dry to leave them open because you don't want them gluing shut. Once you have all three sections of your wing done, it's time to attach the outer portions to the center section. Let's flip these over. The main thing you want to focus on is matching up this hinge line. So let's match that up. Grab a couple little pieces of tape and just tack this together. Check the fit on the top. That's looking pretty good. Our hinge is lined up. So let's take a bigger piece of packing tape and just lay that right over the seam. Press that down nice and firm. Go ahead, take a razor blade, cut off, leaving just some excess on this side, and cut it off at the trailing edge on this side. Now we can open this hinge up and apply glue healthy amount of glue to one side and on the spar as well. Not on the elevon yet though, we'll do that later. And lay that flat against the table. If you have a little bit of glue coming out, just take a scrap piece of foam, smear it away as always. Let this dry for about a minute. So that's dry, you can take a razor blade and just slice this extra piece of tape right down the middle. Just fold that over the leading edge. Next, we want to glue together this other one. So, what I'll do is just pick one side up, apply glue on the inside, push it down against the other piece. Just like that. Again, scrape off the excess glue. Check on the bottom for excess glue if you have any. If not, you just lay it on the table and let that dry. So next what you want to do is just lay a piece of packing tape right over that seam, but right, right on the edge of where that servant hole is. So it's not going over this hole and interrupting with the servo. Now let's do the same thing in the front. Just kind of slit in the middle and fold these over to the bottom. And on the back, we're actually going to keep this excess and fold it over the elevon. Like so. Now I'll just make sure that we have tape on the top and bottom of the seam to keep it nice and secure. Now we can trim the excess off. All right, now that we have one outer section on, let's do the same thing on the other side. Now that we're done making the wing and installing the servos, we can move on to the next step. In this step, we'll install the motor and our ESC. So first we're going to be assembling the parts to put the pusher prop on with the power pack C motor. Uh, so we need these parts here, we just need to remove these uh, pieces of foam and these tabs. Let's go ahead and take our razor blade and clean out these score cuts. Fold this over and just dig those out with your fingernails. Let's do the same thing to the other piece. Then we can go ahead and poke these tabs out as well. This 
So now let's assemble these pieces. Both of these pieces use A-folds, which means that the side plate will rotate above the bottom plate. This is actually easier when you keep the side plate on the table and just rotate the bottom plate up beside it. So let's go ahead and put glue in here, favor it towards the bottom of the side plate. So when you rotate it up, that glue is being squeezed onto the surface of the bottom plate. Now squeegee that sucker. Same thing on the other side. Rotate this up. And squeegee the excess out. That was beautiful. Hold this for about 30 seconds for it to dry. So this other part is also an A-fold. You can go ahead and favor glue on the bottom of the side plate. Keeping the side plate on the table, we can rotate the bottom plate up. And once that's dry, we can repeat the same process on the other side. Repeat that process. Now that both pieces are done, we're ready to join them together. So, as we did before, we crush down these tabs just a little bit with our fingers. So they slide into these tabs a little nicer. And that's a good fit right there. So let's go ahead. And when we glue on the long side over here, only glue about half of that length because the rest of it will be hanging off of the side of the foam. Insert the tabs on one side, and we just rock it over into the other side. And just to reinforce this part, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on the outside, on both sides and squeegee it out, just to get a little bit more reinforced. Now we're ready to glue our firewall on. But this firewall that comes with the uh, speedboat kit, it's actually not completely centered. So you want to make sure that you put these two holes at the top and not the bottom. So you want it facing this way. Now if you're scratch building this at home and you're making the firewall yourself, just measure up 3 quarters of an inch from the bottom of the firewall and that's where your center hole should be. Yeah, we can go ahead and take some tape over it. And bring it down to either side. And line up the tape with the bottom of the firewall. Now if you have any excess tape on top, just cut the corners open and just fold them over. So now it's time to mount the motor, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually cut this center hole out with the razor blade, just so that the shaft of the motor can poke through that hole without getting caught. Next it's time to mount the motor. So you just want to angle the motor leads uh, out onto the top, because when you attach it into the plane it's actually going to be folded over like this. Uh, it doesn't matter which side it's on. Well, it's the same on either side. Now I'm just using some screws that uh, I found at the shop. If your screws look different from your power pack, doesn't matter. As long as it fits, you're all good. So we can go ahead and screw this motor in. Once you're done with this, you can set it aside and we'll come back to it in a second. Right. Before we attach the motor, we need this piece on the tail to glue in right here where the tabs are. So let's just do a test fit. That's looking pretty good. The reason why we didn't put this on earlier is that you only want to put this on now for the prop version, but if you're building an EDF, it's easier to build without this on at this moment. So let's Remember where this spot is right here. You can mark it with a razor blade if you want. And just put glue on this surface from that mark to the trailing edge.
Now before we install the motor onto the plane, we need to test the motor direction first because once we're installed, these uh, bullet connectors will be hidden inside the fuselage and it'll be really hard to get to them later. So what we need to get is our ESC with uh, our extensions already pre-soldered. Now, if, uh, if you get our Power Pack C ESC, uh, it's not gonna have these extensions already on it. It's gonna be pretty short, about two or three inches long. So if you want to, you can buy these 12 inch, uh, 3.5 millimeter bullet extensions that'll reach perfectly from your ESC to your motor. But we don't currently sell the XD60 extension, so you have to splice about a one foot wire in yourself. All right, so to do this, we just randomly plug each bullet connector in. And we can go ahead and plug our ESC into our throttle port on the receiver. And we just need power. And just make sure you have a new model selected on your transmitter. Uh, go ahead and turn it off or do whatever um, your transmitter needs to bind. Go ahead and plug your battery in. Press the bind button if you're on spectrum. Now if you have trouble binding, uh, try stepping about five feet to 10 feet away. And that'll help you get a uh, better reception. Now to test the motor direction, you can just take a piece of tape and put it around the motor shaft this. So you can tell which way the motor's turning by just hitting your finger on this flap without having to you know, put your finger on the motor and actually possibly hurt yourself. So you can go ahead and increase the throttle slightly. Now this motor is currently turning clockwise if you view it from the front of the motor um, and we actually want it turning counterclockwise because this is a pusher. You want to run a pusher prop which uh, you can tell if it's a pusher prop because it says R after the numbers on the front. So we want to put this prop on with the airfoil and the numbers facing this way towards the motor instead of away. Now since my motor is going the wrong direction, all I have to do is unplug two bullet connectors, doesn't matter which, and just swap them. Now you can test it again. And it should be going the right way. Now that we made sure our motor is going the right direction, we can go ahead and install the motor and ESC into the plane. To do this, let's go ahead and thread the ESC in from the back of the plane. Just pull those wires through. We can flip this back over. And when you install this, let's make sure to test fit it first. You want to crumple these edges just a bit so that it can slide in better without catching on the foam. Just go ahead and slide that in. Just make sure that we have a good fit. Alright, when you do this with the Power Pack C motor, you'll notice that these two uh, foam pieces, they sit flush together. If you choose to use a different motor, wait until we build the exhaust pipe and then you can determine how much prop clearance you need and adjust your motor pod back and forth as necessary. We'll touch on that step later. So now that we've tested the fit, we can go ahead and apply glue on the bottom of these parts, on the side cheeks, and we can go ahead and push this in. Once again, making sure that you don't catch on the edges. Just go ahead and make sure that the whole pod is sitting flat on the bottom of the plane. So go ahead and press down like so. If you have glue oozing out, just take a scrap piece of foam and clean up that excess glue. Once that's in, we can go back with the hot glue gun and actually apply some glue on the corners inside here, just to give it a little bit more reinforcement. Just let that glue drip down into that corner. Now that your motor is installed, we can go ahead and place the ESC where we want it, which should be right inside this cavity, right about here, so that we have good airflow, but it's not restricting the airflow too much. Also, this would be a good time to add a servo extension onto your ESC, just so that we can reach the uh, receiver a little bit better in the nose. Now to do this, a good way to keep it from falling off is to put a little dab of hot glue right where the two meet. 
That way, if you want to take it off later, all you have to do is peel off the hot glue and you're good to go. Now we can thread these wires through the pre-cut hole and these side cheeks inside. Just slide both wires through. And we can tilt the plane up a little bit and shake those wires inside. Now we can just take some double-sided tape, cut a good piece of it, and stick it on the back of the ESC. Just peel that backing off. And with the backing off, you just go ahead and stick the ESC down onto the surface of the foam. Right there. That's good placement for the ESC because it'll get enough airflow and cool it down, but it won't block airflow so much that it interferes with the rest of the plane. Now you can just take some tape and secure these motor wires down so they're not flopping around on the inside of the plane. Just enough to tack it down. Now that we've installed our motor and ESC, we can move on to the next step. In this portion of the build, we're going to be installing the EDF and ESC. Let's start out by removing all the little foam tabs from each of these pieces. So as we did before, just score these with a razor blade and pick out the foam. Now one important thing to note is that this plane is designed to fly on a 64 millimeter or a 70 millimeter EDF. And these parts, these foam board parts will all be different if you're using one or the other. If you're using a 70 millimeter EDF, make sure you grab all the pieces with the 70 written on it. If you're using a 64, make sure they stay 64. But all of the steps are exactly the same no matter which size you choose. Now when you're working with these brackets right here, make sure you distinguish between the front pieces and the rear pieces. They'll be marked on one side with an F or an R, which correspond to front and rear. Now let's take a look at this poster board piece. If you're using a 70 millimeter EDF, it's already sized correctly for your thrust tube. If you're using a 64 millimeter EDF, you wanna go ahead and use this etch line as a guide to cut this whole strip off and just use the larger portion of the piece for your thrust tube. That way there isn't so much overlap, which is a good thing. Next. Let's take all these pieces, fold them over as a C-fold, and glue them together so that they're doubled up. However, before you do this, just make sure that you have these two uh, front parts and uh, rear parts separated because you don't want them getting mixed up. Now we can go ahead and put some glue on one side to do the C-fold. And just hold each of them there for about half a minute to a minute for them to dry. So these are the two brackets you'll be mounting your EDF with. You see this is the front one, this is the rear one. The front one's just a touch wider than the rear one and also you can see that this part goes on the bottom and these two come up to the top. So when you assemble it you actually put these two down first and then these four come in. We'll show you that in a second. So if you look on your kit or your plans of your scratch building there's two etch marks right here. One just uh, just behind that seam and one about two inches behind it. So that is just to uh, give you an idea of where to place your EDF and your brackets. So if your front bracket is right on the front etch line and your EDF can't reach all the way to the back one, you can just adjust your, uh, your brackets as necessary. Just place your EDF somewhere around there so your thrust tube is the correct length. So now we can go ahead and add glue to the sides and the bottom of this bracket. Go ahead and just press that in just behind the etch line. Make sure the sides are glued in well. Hold that there for about 30 seconds. Now do the same thing with the back. You're installing these brackets. I want to test fit the uh, the EDF. Just make sure you have about 
at least an eighth of an inch of the EDF sticking out behind the rear bracket. That way you'll have something to uh, attach your thrust tube to. Now when you look at your EDF, you'll notice that the motor wires have to wrap up around and come, uh, come into the front. So, you want to keep that in mind. And just note which side it's on and cut a relief out of these two brackets right here. So we're going to go ahead, just cut a slight indent about a quarter inch in. Doesn't have to be perfect, no one will ever see this. And that should be enough for the wires to poke through. And do the same thing on the rear bracket. Now that we have our relief cuts out, we can go ahead and connect our ESC and our motor. So before we install the EDF, we want to test for motor direction because it will be very hard to change once we have it installed. So to do that, just plug in your bind plug and your ESC into your receiver, bind it up, and we can check for motor direction. So when you spin up your EDF, you just see the blades going counterclockwise and the air pushing out of the back. If that's not going the right way, all you have to do is unplug two random bullet connectors and swap them. And it should be going the right way for you. And now your EDF is ready for installation. So next we're going to install this thrust tube on the EDF. To make the thrust tube, just curl it around the long ways like this. You'll notice it's going to be tapered from the front to the back. That means it's going to be wider in the front and narrower in the back. And to hold the back on, actually, we can take our rear plate right here that's made for our size EDF and thrust tube, curl this around, smaller than we need it to be, and just stick this through like so, and that'll hold it nice and tight for us while we work on the EDF end. All right. So when you install the thrust tube, just keep in mind, if you're installing the EDF this way, you want to leave this flap open on the top because we'll be using that later. So what we want to do now, flip this whole thing over and slide it on the bottom and just see where you need to uh, cut reliefs in, in your thrust tube because every EDF is a little bit different, it has tabs in different places, it has uh, motor wires in different places, so just make a note of that. Take a pencil or a razor blade and mark that on your thrust tube. And just make little reliefs. You can simply cut like this and another relief beside it and on the other side as well. Now we can bend those reliefs back and see if it fits. That's looking good. So now just take a small piece of tape and tape it to the bottom. Now you want this to overlap about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch over the, uh, the rear end of the EDF. Should be plenty. Make sure it's sealed on all the sides. Doing this on the bottom first allows us to install the EDF like this and then we can make adjustments to the thrust tube after we install it. A little bit easier that way and a little bit easier to perfect. So now we can install the EDF into our fuselage. We might need to slide this part back a little bit to make it fit. Just carefully slide that in. Make sure your EDF is sitting well on the brackets and your thrust tube can wrap all the way around. So before we take the EDF out and glue it back in, this is a little bit difficult to manage with the thrust tube flapping all around. So we're just going to take a couple pieces of tape and temporarily seal it together. Now I can put some hot glue on the bottom surface of both of these brackets. And on the tops of the rear bracket where these two uh, tabs on the EDF connect to. And now we can go ahead and slide that in. 
making sure to uh, put the motor wires where we cut the relief for them in the brackets. And just press evenly down on that EDF so you can get good adhesion on both brackets. Once the EDF is glued in, let's focus our attention on the back. On this bracket right here, so let's apply glue on all the sides except for the bottom. You want to leave this flat back here open. So let's slide it back on. And onto the airframe. And just press that against the back end of the fuselage while holding down on the two sides like this to make sure that you have a good bond between the two and there's no gaps. You can even take a scrap piece of foam, just hold up against the back, just for some extra support. Now that our rear plate is installed, we're ready to finalize our thrust tube. So what I have to do now is take these uh, pieces of tape that we put on earlier off. Now that your thrust tube is in line correctly with the rear bracket also installed, take uh, one finger on the inside and one on the outside. Just rub them against each other like this so you can press the circle of the tube against that hole in the uh, rear bracket. Now we can just tape this up right here. If that slides a little back, don't worry. We can open up this flap and actually put a dab of hot glue on the inside and hold it in place. Now be careful. Hot glue transfers heat really well through poster board, so be careful not to burn yourself. Now we can also tack down the front end with a piece of tape. Tie it around the EDF like we want it and tack down the middle section. Now that we've got the general shape of our tube, we can take a longer piece of tape and cover up that whole seam. Your EDF uh, installation is almost complete. All we have to do is mount on these brackets on the front and rear. So let's go ahead and do that. Now keep in mind, if your EDF has tabs like this one does, uh, keep in mind that you might have to trim off the bottom of these tabs just a little bit to get the seat properly. And uh, every EDF is a little bit different, so we didn't design it with the tabs already cut in. So just cut them in where you, uh, you feel is necessary. Go ahead and put glue on all the sides except for the top. And press it down in on top of the other bracket. You can also squeeze in the sides just to make sure everything's secure. You might remember from a previous step that we cut out a relief in the wing for an EDF build. Now this is why. You can see that the lip of the EDF actually sticks up above the bottom of the fuselage just a little bit and that's what the relief is for. Now when you're installing your wing in the next step and it doesn't fit properly, you might want to check this relief. If you have to cut it a little bit bigger, go ahead. To finish up this step of the build, all we need to do is install this piece on the back of the fuselage. So let's go ahead and pop out these two tabs right here. and crush these two tabs with our fingers just so that fits in a little bit better. Now we can test fit it, make sure that everything fits properly. And that's looking pretty good. So we can go ahead and mark where these uh, leave off with our fingernails or a razor blade, pencil, whatever you like. And just go ahead and add a nice bead of glue on the sides and the back. Go ahead and press it down as we did before. Give that about 30 seconds to dry. So when you're done with your EDF, you'll notice that there's still a little bit of paper sticking out right here. Now that's perfectly fine. You want to leave that on because you can see where uh, 
this bottom piece comes in, if you're building the EDF version, the nice thing is you can actually take that piece of paper, put a little bit of bead of glue right in between them, and fold it over this piece right here. So you can have a nice clean seam without this open gap there in the EDF version. Also, you'll notice that a little bit of uh, poster board sticks out of the back end. Don't worry about that. Don't trim it either. The exhaust pipe will cover that in a later step. So in this last step of this portion of the build, all we need to do is secure our ESC down and thread our wires through this pre-cut hole in the side cheeks right here. Make sure your battery lead is longer than ours because this is just for a demonstration. We didn't uh, splice in an extension. Make sure this is long enough to reach your battery in the nose. So let's go ahead and thread these wires through. And we can simply take a piece of double-sided tape Peel the backing off and just stick it on the side of the fuselage. That way, it's nice and secure, but it doesn't obstruct airflow so much that the EDF is interfered with. When you're done with installing the EDF and ESC, we can move on to our next step. In this step, we're going to attach the wings to the fuselage. So the first thing you want to do is just to grab a couple of servo extensions from your power pack. Now if you didn't get the power pack, we also do sell these separately. So let's just go ahead and plug these into our Elevon servos, one into each. And as we did before with the ESC extension, just go ahead and put a dab of hot glue where these two connect, just to keep them in place. Now we can take this wing, flip it over on the bottom of the fuselage. First of all, thread these uh, servo extensions through the same hole as we did before. Now you'll notice that there's a little cavity right in here cut out for the leading edge of the wing. So that's what we want to stick the pointy end of the wing. And then this back end will just rest up against this part. So now that you're happy with the fit of your wing, you can go ahead and lift it back up, being sure not to uh, pull these servo extensions out. And now we just want to put glue on this whole surface out here. And this surface on the other side. Also, we want to put some glue on the inside of this surface, as well as this side. Don't worry if some glue drops out on the other side, you can simply squeegee it out later. Alright, so insert the wing as we did before, centering it up in the front and in the back. And now just apply even pressure where the fuselage is, so right about here. Apply even, even pressure and make sure that these back tabs are lined up. Now we can flip it over and rest this on the table, making sure to still apply even pressure on the whole surface. Take a squeegee, scrap piece of foam, just clean up that excess glue. You can also do this if there's glue coming out of either side. Hold this for about a minute to let it dry. This is a very important part and we don't want it moving around. Now once that's dry, we can go back with a hot glue gun over the seam. Take a scrap piece of foam and smear that in. This is just to reinforce it a little bit and clean up that seam even more. And we do the same thing on the other side. So for the next part of this step, we're gonna be taking this piece and using it to cover the bottom of this plane. Make it look nice and sharp. Now we can put this whole assembly aside for now and just focus on this piece right here. So as always, I want to take a razor blade and just score these cuts down a little bit more. Just so that when we take the foam out, it's a little bit cleaner. If you're not comfortable using a razor blade for this, you can take a credit card or a gift card and just slide it in through that slot and it'll do the same thing. Now we can go ahead and take these foam pieces out. Now we can go ahead and peel this side of the paper off 
just on this side, not on this side where most of the paper is. On the inside surface, just so we can get some better adhesion on both sides. Now what we want to do with all these paper tabs is actually fold them over onto the other side of the foam just to seal the edge off and give us a nice crisp looking edge. So you want to do that by just taking some hot glue, putting a nice bead in between the uh, foam and the paper, just taking a scrap piece of foam and folding that over. Hold that there for about five seconds and fold it over again. And you should have some glue that squeezed out from the first fold into the second so that both are securely intact. Now we can do the same thing to all the other tabs. The bigger one is a little bit more tricky just because of the size. We can just do it little by little in sections. Just fold them over. There's some spots with uh, glue missing. It's just still flapping up. You can simply go ahead and add some more glue later. So doing this part, you can also use the table as your friend on the two outside tabs. And just simply put this against the edge of the table, rotate up, hold it for about five seconds. Now you can see there's excess glue coming out of the edge. That's what we want. And just rotate this again 90 degrees flat onto the table. Now the reason why you don't want to use the table as your friend for this middle tab is that no matter which way you press it, it's always going to hit one of the other tabs on the end. So for this middle portion, you want to use a larger piece of foam or even a book to help you fold it over. Now for the back little tab, we're going to do the same exact thing. Now that all the tabs are folded over and glued down, you can see that we have a nice edge on the outside that doesn't expose any foam and keeps the paper from peeling off. Now to attach this piece onto the fuselage, I want to open up this paper tab flap right here. And then we can simply flip this over so that the foam is exposed on the bottom and slide it up against this foam up here and match it up with the back. Now if you match this up correctly, it should line up with the outside of the fuselage and it should completely cover up these two tabs on the outside. Now for gluing, we're going to want glue in a couple places. Firstly, up here, right where it's going to join with the fuselage and all across the bottom surface of this piece. Now we can flip this back over, slide it forward until it butts up against the fuselage, and focus on lining up at the back. And while you're doing this, make sure to apply even pressure across the piece so that you're getting good adhesion throughout. Next, all we want to do is just add a little bit of glue right where this flap meets the foam. Take a scrap piece of foam and just fold that over. squeeze that excess glue out. That's simply to clean up the looks and keep this piece of paper from getting ripped off when you land. Now that we've attached the wings to the fuselage, we can move on to our next step. So in this step, we're gonna be assembling the tail fin, attaching the canards, making the exhaust pipe, and finishing off the canopy. So first, let's work on the tail assembly. These are the only pieces you'll need for the tail, and let's uh, focus on this one first. Now, as with uh, all the other pieces, just take a razor blade, clean out these score cuts just a little, making sure not to cut all the way through to the other side of the paper. Now we can fold this over, peel these pieces of foam out. Now when you peel this off, make sure you support the tabs inside with your fingers, or else you could risk wrinkling those as well. Next we want to take a razor blade or a sanding block and just 
bevel this foam right here from the edge of the paper on the bottom to this etch line on the inside. So we can go ahead and angle that blade how we want it to. And just carefully cut that off. And repeat the same process on the other side as well as the front. Now that we've beveled those, we can go ahead and take this paper at the etch line and just peel that off. Now in the front, we're gonna do it to the two outside pieces as well as the middle piece. But for the back, we're only gonna peel off the paper from the two outside pieces. When those are peeled off, we can go ahead and use the same technique we used earlier on the nose and just carefully curl this foam up just a touch. It doesn't need to be much, it's not a very extreme angle. Just enough so that when you fold it over, it'll cut the front nicely. And do the same thing on the back. All right, now we're ready to fold this piece together. So let's do this one side at a time. It's going to be a B fold, so that means the side plate is going to rotate up beside the bottom plate. So let's go ahead and put glue all around the side of the bottom plate. Rotate up. You can take a scrap piece of foam and actually support the top of it from the bottom while holding the side up against that curve. So we're getting a nice smooth finish on the top and the side. Hold that for about 30 seconds for it to dry. Now we can repeat the same thing on the other side, except now we're going to add glue here, as well as on these two beveled portions right here. And the same thing, we go ahead and fold this over. And this time, we want to make sure that it's down flat and clamped at the two bevel. Give this a good minute and a half to dry just so that these bevels on the ends are clamped nice and shut. Next, we're gonna take these two excess pieces uh, of paper and fold them over on the sides. Now to do this, I'm just gonna take a small bead of glue, put it on the front of this bevel. Don't worry if it spills over a little bit. And just a tiny little bit of glue on the front end. Now we're working on the front because this piece of paper is a lot shorter than the back one. So we can rotate this up 90 degrees. Hold it there for about five to 10 seconds. And rotate back on the edge of the table so that we're not catching these tabs. And just hold that there for a solid half a minute to dry. Now we can repeat the same process on the back. So this time, we're gonna put a small bead of glue on this chamfered edge right here. This edge, this chamfered edge on the bottom. We're actually gonna extend our glue on the bottom about an inch from the back. So same thing as before. Let's rotate at every angle. So stop at a 45 and stop at a 90. Then another 45. Now we can take this to the edge of the table and fold it all the way over. All right, now if this flap on the bottom is glued all the way, we can just add a little bit more glue, just press that down again. Now if the bottom of this piece doesn't look too perfect, don't worry about it because you're not gonna see it too much anyways. This is only if you get up close and personal with the plane, just for that extra little bit of detail to seal the bottom up. Now we can take some scissors and just trim the excess paper off. You can also use a razor blade. Do the same thing on the other side and the front. Now that everything's folded over and glued, you can pop this center tab out with the razor blade. And just pull that out. This will be where our vertical stabilizer goes. Now we can bring our vertical stab back into the picture and just crush the bottom edge of this a little bit so it can fit in the tab smoother. Let's go ahead and fit that in there. 
and it should seat down all the way flush. And this bottom should also be flush with the bottom of the side piece. So when you're test fitting this, make sure that the, uh, the fin is pointing towards the front of this piece. And you can tell that it's the front because the top edge of this, uh, the front, curves down a little bit, whereas the back does not. The back is just chamfered straight, but this is a nice smooth curve. I can take this back out and just apply glue to this front tab as well as this, as well as this back tab. Once again, press that in nice and firm. Now that this is glued in, you can go back with a bead of hot glue on both sides. And with the scrap piece of foam, you can smear that in just for a little bit of, bit of reinforcement. Now we need to bring our fuselage back into the picture. We're just going to focus on the rear portion of the fuselage. So you should notice that these tabs line up perfectly with these tabs. And they're just going to fit right on top like so. So the test fit, we just want to uh, crimp down on these tabs again. And go ahead, fit one side of it in first, and rock it over to the other side. Just make sure everything fits well. It's nice and straight, up and down. So to glue this, just apply glue about half an inch behind the rear tabs, all across the center of the vertical fin, and throughout the rest of the bottom piece. Now we can do the same thing as we did before. Line the tabs up on one side, rock it over to the other. Now we want to focus on applying even pressure on the front and the back, and just making sure that the rudder points straight up and down. Hold this in place for about a minute to dry. Now we can take our hot glue and again, apply just a bead of glue for reinforcement. And with a scrap piece of foam, just scrape that off squeeze it on the inside. Then we can do the same thing for the other side. Now we can flip the airplane around and install our canards. When we're installing our canards, we want to make sure that it's facing the right direction. So when we put it in like this, this cutout should be facing towards the back of the plane. So as we did before, let's crimp down these tabs and test fit it in the fuselage. That should fit very well. Uh, having our right angle gauge handy, let's put some glue on just these three tabs right here. Not on the back, because that's not gonna be contacting the fuselage. And again, slide it in. We take our right angle gauge, just throw it right next to the canard in the fuselage, just to make sure everything's square. Hold this for about a minute to dry. When your canard is all glued in, we can go back on both the bottom and the top with just a bead of glue and a scrap piece of foam just to scrape that. Scrape that off and provide some reinforcement for the canards. And repeat the same process on the other side. To build our exhaust pipe, we'll need these two pieces right here. So first, we want to just score these score cuts with our razor blade again and remove the foam from the outside. Now for this piece that's going to be the actual exhaust, we want to take a barbecue skewer, take the pointy end, and just score those cuts just a touch more. All right. Now that we've scored these cuts with our barbecue skewer, we can carefully bend up each part one by one just to establish that crease throughout the whole piece. Now you can see that when we fold the whole piece over, it maintains a nice octagonal shape with equal angles on all sides. Before we glue this though, we want to take a razor blade or a sanding block, just slightly bevel 
these two ends just a touch. If you're building the kit, we basically just want to take off that other layer of paper on the other side. If you're scratch building, just a slight bevel will do. Now let's test fit this again and line this up on the other side. Now this octagonal piece right here is actually just a build jig. So we can square that up with the bottom and press that on. And that'll keep everything nice and, and even when we glue it together. We're gonna put some glue in all these creases so that when we fold it, it'll maintain the shape. Just wanna put some glue in every crease. And have a scrap piece of foam on hand. So we can go ahead and smear that in later. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing all these creases at once, you can simply do a few at a time and it'll work just the same. And don't worry if it looks messy on the inside because you won't be able to see that anyways. Let's fold this over and place it on top of our jig so you can hold that nice octagonal shape. We can adjust it a little bit as necessary to even up these angles on the top as well. Hold that there for a good minute to dry. Now that your glue has dried, you can see that it holds the shape well. All we have to do now is glue together this seam here. Now we don't need this jig anymore, so we can toss that to the side. And just place a bead of glue on one side of the seam. And we can pull these two together. If you have a little bit of excess glue coming out, just scrape it off with a scrap piece of foam and hold that tight. Give it another minute to dry. Also to reinforce this, we can just take a bead of glue on the inside and also smear that in the seam just to reinforce a little bit more. So this part, we're gonna be sliding this exhaust on and gluing it in. Now if you chose to use a different motor, um, this is the time where you want to adjust the motor pod back and forth so you can get the correct prop clearance for the prop you're using. So to do that, I want to slide the exhaust on first, just kind of hold that in place. Also slide our prop onto the motor all the way to where we want it. And from there, you can see how far you need to push the motor in or pull it out to get the proper clearance. Now you can see we have about an eighth of an inch of clearance throughout the whole thing, which is perfect. Now if you're using a shorter motor than the Power Pack C and you actually have to slide the motor pot out, Simply slide it out to where you feel is necessary and just trim off the motor pod where it sticks out right there. Just to make it flush with the rear end of the fuselage. Now that we've tested our fit and we're happy with our prop clearance, we can go ahead and line this up and just see where it needs glue. So you can see down here, when we're building the prop version, it isn't touching. Now when we build our EDF version, that'll be different. Now for our prop version, the only places we need glue are the two sides and the top. So let's keep that in mind. Put glue on the two sides and all across the top surface. Now we can go ahead and slide this on again and just make sure that the fit is good on all sides. Hold that there for about a minute for it to dry. Now we're going to finish off the canopy. This will actually be the back end of the canopy that attaches onto the fuselage. What you want to do is just take one side of the paper and peel it all the way off, like so. So now that provides us with a good surface, take the edge of the table, flip it over, then curl with our palms on the edge of the table. So curl that a few times and rotate it like we did before with the front of the canopy, just to get that crease established this way on the center line of the part. We can also press this with our thumbs against the surface of the table just to get the sides a little bit more extremely curved. So now what we want to do is take a razor blade or a sanding block and trim a bevel on the back end on both sides. Now when you do this, you want to start with a deeper bevel on the back, almost cutting into the middle of the piece and then bringing it shallower as you get towards the front. 
you can see that it kind of tapers out into the middle of the piece and makes this part thinner as well. I do the same thing on the other side. So you can see on the back end here, we have a very deep bevel reaching about three quarters of an inch to an inch in from the back end. And it goes all the way to the paper, all the way around. Now we can crush in our tabs, just as we did before with some other pieces, and fit them into these two tabs right here. Now when you do this, you're going to notice that the back end and the front end both immediately want to pop out. So you want to hold those especially when you're gluing, but we're just test fitting, and make sure that these sides are both straight. Now we can apply glue to the edge of this whole piece. Go ahead and insert it into the tabs. Remember, when we're doing this, make sure you remember to press in on the edges on the back as well as in the front. We want the front to match up with uh, these two side cheeks here. The back, we'll just want to line up in the middle. We can go ahead and slide the nose on again, just get a test fit, see how it looks. There we go. Should line up pretty well. If you need to adjust it just a little to get them matched up perfectly, that's fine. Hold it there for about a minute and a half to dry. Now that we're happy with that, we can go back as always and trace it with a bead of glue on the outside. And with the scrap piece of foam, we just smear that into the seam, make it even stronger. Do the same thing on the other side. Now that we have the back end of our canopy installed on the fuse slot, and that's looking pretty good. Now that we've finished off the tail, the canards, the exhaust pipe, and finished off the canopy, we can move on to our next step. To put the control linkages together, we'll need two control horns and two push rods. Now these push rods are a lot longer than you need, so you can't actually make both push rods out of one, but it's just easier to do it out of two. The first thing we want to do is thread the Z-bend into the very top hole on the control horn. That'll give us the most resolution of our system. All right, now we can go ahead and pop this control horn into the pre-cut slot in the elephant. That should have the whole control horn holes centered up exactly with the hinge line. Now when you install this, it's the easiest to have the control rod on the outside of the control horn. That way if you ever have to service it, it's easier to take out from the outside instead of from the inside. Now when you're test fitting, don't glue this in yet. We want to make the Z-Bend on this side first, so we can slide the Z-Bend in and then glue the control horn in. So to determine where your other Z-Bend is going to be, you can take your reflex gauge, which is including your kit. Now this is different than the throw gauge because the throw gauge has two, two cuts in it. This only has one. So this is the gauge you'll be using. And just hold it up against the hinge, perpendicular to the hinge, so we can get the correct amount of reflex. And take your fingernail and just line it up with where the holes on the servo arm are. When that's marked, we can pull this away, take a pair of pliers, and just clamp it where our finger was, and just bend it 90 degrees towards the plane. All right. When that's done, and turn it around, clamp it, and bend another 90 degrees perpendicular to our last bend. Now that's called a simplified Z-bend. So just clip the excess off, and there you go. Now I usually prefer to take the simplified Z-Bend and actually bend it another 90 degrees this way to make the whole thing straight and flat, and that's a normal Z-Bend. Now I'll take this end of the Z-Bend and insert it into the middle hole of your servo arm. We don't want it on the outside because that would give us too much response but we don't want it on the inside hole because that will give us too little control. The middle is a good in-between. Now when we test our fit, 
you should see that you have enough reflex so that the bottom surface of the Elevon is even with the top surface of the wing. Now we can lift our control horn back up and go ahead and glue it in. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now we're going to move on to programming and installing our receiver. So to do that, we just insert the throttle into our throttle port. And then our Elevon servos, we'll just put one into the aileron port. And then the other one into the elevator port. Now don't stick this receiver firmly in your plane yet because we may have to switch the aileron and elevator around later to get the control surfaces moving the right way. Now if you're using Spectrum, programming Elevons in your transmitter is pretty simple. All you have to do is go to System Setup, and then select Aircraft Type, go to Wing, and then scroll to Elevon. This plane on Spectrum should be on the Elevon setting, and not the Elevon B setting. Now if you're using different servos, it might be, so just keep that in mind if they're not going the right way, and you try to reverse your servos but they still don't work, try switching between Elevon and Elevon B. Now when we're programming, the first thing we want to do is to adjust our sub trim. So even though we centered the servos with our server centering tool and we uh, made this control linkage manually, sometimes the servo is still off center when you uh, program in the radio. So to put sub trim in your radio, all you have to do is go to system setup. Now this is on your, if you're on spectrum. If you're using some other transmitter, uh, go ahead and look in your manual or look it up online on how to put in subtrim. Go on spectrum, go to servo setup, and then go to travel, select that, scroll to the right until you get to subtrim. And then just see there's a right aileron and a left aileron. I'll uh, just pick one and move it. If it's not the right one, use the other subtrim, and there we go. Now I can bring our reflex gauge back into the picture and just set that on top of the Elevon like so and adjust your sub trim until it's sitting nice and flat on that gauge. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see in our current setup with the Elevon setting and not the Elevon B we have up is up, down is down, left is left, and right is right. So everything's moving the right way. If you're having a problem with that and uh, stuff isn't moving the right way you can try a few things. First of all, you can go to the reversing tab in your transmitter and try reversing the right aileron or the left right aileron or a combination of both. Or you can go back into the system settings like we mentioned before and switch to Elevon B. Or you can even take the receiver and swap the two aileron and elevator servos. One combination of all those things should give you the right control direction. So now that we have that, it's also a good idea to program dual rates and expo into your transmitter. So to do that on Spectrum, just go to the dual rates and expo tab, and then you can adjust expo. I usually like about 30% expo on my high rates. And we can put these both on a switch. So just scroll down to switch. Let's say I want my dual rates on uh, switch D. So I can actually have three positions. So if I set zero to be my highest, since the switch is at the highest position, we can go 100% with 30% expo. Um, next, I like to do one with 70 and 30% expo. And then for my last setting, I like to do 50% and 30% expo. That gives you a nice range of dual rate options to choose from for your maiden flight and for fast passes if you want a little bit smoother control, this is how you can do it. So let's do the same thing for the elevator. Now an important thing to remember with Elevon planes is that when you pull up, both the Elevons go up and that's your up elevator control. If one of them pitches up more than the other, it'll also add unwanted roll control. So what you want to do to line them both up perfectly is pin the elevator down all the way, go into servo setup if you're using spectrum, and in the travel adjustment setting, you can adjust how far each servo goes up and down. 
So you can see right now I'm adjusting the left aileron, or the left aileron, to go less. And if I need more, I can give it more. Mine was already looking pretty good, so I'll just set it back to 100 where it was. This is simply to adjust for some minor mechanical deviations in your build. Now to secure a receiver down, we can just simply take some double-sided uh, tape, put it on the back of this, and peel off the backing and just stick it on the inside of the fuselage. There we go. Now all we have to do is install the Velcro for our battery and in our fuselage. So we can just go ahead and take the Velcro and put it in your kit. And we're actually going to put the fuzzy side in the fuselage. Now some people do it the other way, but this is just how we do it at the shop. Uh, just stick with whatever you've been doing, it works either way. Just make sure that all your batteries and planes are cross compatible with each other. You can go ahead and stick the other type of Velcro on the battery. Just cut this down a little bit. Now this plane will actually support a very wide range of batteries. You can use anything from a 2200 3 cell to a 4200 4 cell. It all depends on if you can get it to balance. Now the balance points are actually marked on the bottom of the fuselage here with these two holes. So once you've installed your battery, you can go ahead and attach the nose back on just to get that weight back on there. So we can get an accurate CG test. Now hold it up by the two small dots on the, on the bottom to see which way it pitches. Now you can see right now it's pitching pretty heavily towards the back. So that means I either have to use a heavier battery move the battery up or put more weights in the nose to get the correct CG. All right, now let's try balancing it again. We're using the Hyperion 3300 4 cell now. And that's balancing pretty well. Just a touch nose heavy on the CG. That's not a bad thing for the Maiden. So once you have it balanced, it's time to put the prop on and let's go fly it. All right, so we're ready for a Maiden on this X-29. Um, a good tip though, especially for your Maiden, is to have a friend launch you. Yeah. Especially with this plane and with the prop, if you're running the pusher prop version, there's a lot of torque to handle. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind also too, if this is your first uh, you know, Maiden and you're not comfortable with it, check out our video down below, six quick tips for a successful first flight. This really isn't a beginner airplane though. No, it's not. So if this is your first airplane, congratulations for getting through the build, but also have someone help you out with it. Yep. All right, let's You want to put in the air? All right. We're actually fortunate, we're not doing a downward launch. Now you uh, you want to be careful about your launch, right? Yeah, um, if you try to hold it underhand and, and chuck it, you want to watch out for the prop, definitely. So that's why, for the prop version, I would personally recommend a, uh, a firm underhand toss. And for the EDF version though, you don't have a prop to worry about, so you can launch that however you want. And also the torque of the motor is going to cause it to do a little bit of weirdness, right? Yep, depending on if you're running a normal prop or a reversible prop, uh, you'll have a torque in a different direction. So a good tip while landing, especially with this plane, is to uh, cut throttle and just glide it in. You don't want to run the throttle because you might risk uh, you know, touching your prop to the ground and snapping your prop. And also, when you uh, cut throttle and come for a landing, don't get greedy and try to uh, pull out of that landing and get another one. The, uh, the thing with this plane is that it has a very short wingspan, so if you try to punch the throttle, it'll torque the wing right over. So on landing, even if it's a bit far away, just set it down where it is, you'll be fine. Three quarters to full throttle and full up on the elevator. That's ridiculously fast.
Anders, you did a great job, man. Thanks, That was man. incredible. Thank you. Now, this is really special. This is actually, Anders, as your first major design, yep. right? And he put as much passion all the way through the summer to make it fly good and also build good. And you did a great job on that build video. Thanks, brother. Thank so, you. So this is something, as we talked about earlier, that's really, really special here. Uh, Andres has not only given his amazing design to flight test and support flight test, but also we're going to be using this mainly because you are a high school student yeah. to help support other schools. So when you guys buy this as a speedboat kit, you're going to be able to support uh, schools through our Take Flight Initiative. To learn more about that, we'll have some links down below. Uh, Andres, great work, man. You want to put it back up? Thanks, man. Let's do it. See you next time.